Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody. Militia Man and Crew here again. Just wanted to say hello and hope everybody had an awesome day. And hopefully this, uh, this week, being the mid-hump day, is going to get us into the future, which is even better. So let's see what happens. Um, here's an article today that we'll, we'll just jump right in. Uh, future of international trade transactions in U.S. dollars in Iraq. There's plenty of information in this article. That's the title of it. Um, jump down to like paragraph number five. It says, Iraq with the aim of reorganizing foreign trade financing began concluding agreements with the central banks, which um, Iraq has extensive trade exchange with, in agreement with solid correspondent banks in China, India, the United Arab Emirates, um, and Turkey, okay? And what they do is they're going to deal with, the, with all of those currencies. They'll deal in the Chinese won, the Indian rupee, Emirati dirham, and the uh, Turkish lira. What's their goals? They, they basically got two goals. The first is to enable our banks to agree with correspondent banks in these countries and other countries to deal directly with them after canceling that electronic platform. That sounds like they're going to get rid of the dollar auction platform as we know it, but we already know that they're going to use the U.S. dollar anyway, and they're going to do that in a big way because that's they have oil and that's what they that's what they're going to use but they'll be able to use all the different currencies so canceling the electronic platform and the second is to introduce new foreign currencies for commercial and banking transactions other than the US dollar to enable banks that do not have US correspondent banks And what are they going to do? They're going to continue that flow of foreign transfers with those alternative countries according to special agreements with their central banks. So they're going to, Central Bank of Iraq is going to deal with all those other central banks. That sounds like internationalism to me. Anyway, it says that they, uh, this, uh, what they have says this can help control reduction in the widespread local demand for the U.S. dollar. Okay, local demand for the U.S. dollar. That's going to dry up that black market type situation. That's what it sounds like. What's it going to do? It's going to create a state of balance in the money market and maintain the purchasing power of the local currency, which is the Iraqi dinar. So it says this method is now well in effect in addition to the existence of dealing in the U.S. dollar as well. So like I said, they're talking about the other currencies, but they're not forgetting about the dollar. So take that into consideration. Um, as we move forward, because Iraq is going to need to do trade with all those different uh, countries, regions, for instance. So it's going to be a big thing. Um, one of the things you got to think about, too, is the development road, the de development path, whatever you want to call it, is uh, a very big uh, world-wide um, <laughs> expectation place, or the corridor. It says, Turkish... Trade Minister Development Path is the, the best corridor in the world. And, uh, of course, because it's going to shave off about 15 days uh, for, for Iraq's trade. But we'll get into that later. It says that uh, Omar Bulat confirmed on Monday that the development road is the best passage in the world, pointing out his government's readiness to help Iraq in completing the strategic and important development road project for the region and the world. And also the Minister of Transport, Razak uh, al-Sadawi, met with the Turkish Minister of Trade, which is Omar. And the visit at the head of a large delegation of about 150 businessmen and exporter, exporters council and the contractors union. So it was the exporters council and the contractors union consisting of about 150 people. He, this uh, al-Sadawi, he stresses that the development road project will pave the way for important strategic trade relations between Iraq and Turkey, no doubt, no doubt at all. It says Turkish companies have worked on multiple projects in Iraq already, and they note that the Turkish government's readiness to help Iraq complete the strategic development project for the region and the world 
as it will be one of the best corridors in the world as Ankara feels the special nature of this road. So it sounds like to me Turkey's all in on this. They want this to happen just as much as Iraq does. The Turkish delegation congratulated the, the Minister of Transport on the completion of the first five births project for the Port of Fa. And this part is going to serve the global transportation map and enhance the economic development of Iraq and the countries of that region. Realize, you guys, um, there's a, a there's a um, an entity out there, and it's from Iraq, and it got started many years ago, and it is um, called the um, Development Management System, the Iraq Development Management System. So it's IDMS. So what is this system? Well, the system is going to be based and work with a U.S.-based company called Synergy, Synergy International. And Synergy International has some comments about what's, how it, what they're going to do, etc. But it says the system is designed to be reliable and invaluable resource for distributing development projects across sectors, provinces, and implementing entities. So everybody that's involved that's coming into Iraq across sectors, across provinces, they're going to be able to be the people. That's, that business is going to be the, the, the one to go to for information um, and, uh, and data. Okay. It says the Iraqi development management system was developed to align with the support of the National Development Plan for the years 2010 through 2018. So this is a little past history, which includes approximately 3,000 projects with a total value of about $186 billion that was to be implemented over five years. This says the system was designed through the collaboration of expert teams from the Ministry of Planning, the U.S. Agency of International Development, which is the USAID, you guys have probably seen that before. It says the development project, the United Nations Development Program, and the Synergy International Systems. So obviously they spent some time of about eight years trying to get this to be uh, up and running, but it didn't quite happen that way. But now I think you're going to find the <coughs> Al Sudani and the religious leaders are all for it. Um, it says the Iraqi Development Manage Management System aims to enhance accountability and transparency in managing development resources in Iraq. A little back history on that is that a lot of money uh, just got ripped off. Okay, they started projects to build build schools, etc. The money was funded, but yet they didn't do anything with it so, because all the money got leached out because of corruption. Well, the new system that al-Sudani has been underway with is, is not going to allow for that anymore. And I think that you're going to find that they have a very positive tone in the air about this development road project, especially from the Port of Fa. Uh, you know, having 150 businessmen, the unions, contractors, etc., um, they're going to go a long way. Basically, what they're looking for um, is to take care of all those people that have invested and will invest and so that their money is going to be effectively um, managed accordingly, monitored accordingly. So in other words, they're going to know where the money goes all along the way. A big step, and that's what Al Sadr and Al Sudani are looking for, because and even Al Sistani, they want the citizens to get what they deserve, a portion of that money that they um, of from all the non-oil resources and their oil resources. Uh, they're going to get some of that, and that's some of the things that uh, we're all going to talk about. There's um, a member of uh, patreon.com forward slash M-M-A-N-D-C-R-E-W. And we have a Discord chat room. And one of our members, he speaks fluent Arabic. Uh, we have others, too, that do the same. Um, but this gentleman was able to do a little bit of a triangulation for me because uh, some of the information that we gather outside print um, comes to fruition and you have to ask questions and so by asking some questions saying hey I, I've heard this is there any uh, validity to it okay so that he uh, gave me an audio and so I put that in patreon so for all you members that want to come in and see it or any new members that want to come in and, and hear it you guys come on in and check it out it's called sit rep exposure TV education for citizens purchasing power so those are the topics that, that this audio covers inside our Patreon. And so I, I suggest everybody uh, come in and check it out. It'll, it'll, it'll make you think because of what I'm going to go over tonight because it fits 
into this. But the person that told me some information, I used that, asked him about it, and sure enough, what are they talking about in the streets? What is the educational process? Iraq is closed down right now, it closed today for the census and tomorrow for the census. And it's gonna take about 48 hours, up to 48 hours. Um, they said 24, then they jumped it to 48, and, but anyway, anywhere from 20 to 48 hours because the new technical system that they have is gonna work um, quickly. But it, this basically, this audio, um, is it talks about purchase power. Um, it talks about registering for the um, national card uh, it's sort of an insurance card, as he puts it. Why? <clears throat> it, because it's going to be part of the wealth that's going to be replaced. They're going to give back wealth to the citizens, and they're going to use those cards. And if you don't have a card, you're not going to be a part of it. And that's what he's talking about in the audio. Come in and check it out. Um, I think it, I think you'll like it. There's some strong information that says that um, it's true. It's on the TV. I guess his view was Channel 1, Channel 3, but they may have different names for those news outlets other than Channel 1 and Channel 3. But in the historical side of things, that's what they talked about. So anyway, back to the census part, or what I mentioned was um, census will achieve justice. So that's what they're calling for. Basically, the country is calling on all Iraqis to cooperate with the census teams that they'll be receiving in their homes and making the correct data. They want it to be accurate. When are they going to start? They started today, our time, or no, their time today, seven o'clock in the morning, and it will continue to the end of tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, whatever it says, Thursday. Um, cooperate with the census teams by receiving them, firstly. Make the right statements because of the importance of this in charting the future of Iraq. So they're hammering home how important this is. And you're going to see there's more to it. Al Sadr calls, he's a religious figure. He's, um, he's the guy that does the million man marches. He, he gets attention. And so what does he say today? He says he calls for a fair census. And he advises the citizens. That's the article. It says the leader of the Shiite national movement, by the way, it, 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 that's a new name, by the way. Not that it's important, but they did change the name. Uh, he says that the people must provide accurate statistics to show the facts in the current and correct and precise manner as those are, um, as there are those who want to falsify them. So they've got a connection. They got the biometric things going on, the cards, etc. For many people, so ultimately they want this to be down to the wire, accurate as possible which is good. And there's going to be consequences if you don't play by the rules. And just like the black market, there's going to be consequences if you don't play by the rules. And if you keep doing what you're going to do and you find yourself where the dinar becomes stronger than, than the dollar, the uh, people that are still holding dollars <laughs> in the country are not going to be happy. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's on them. Sud the Sudanese, this article called Sudanese calls for not paying attention to rumors that try to thwart the census. So Al Sadr is talking, Al Sudani is talking, and what are they talking about? Look, folks, keep it simple. Do what you're supposed to do. It's basically stating that um, listen to the teams, give them the correct and accurate information and the importance. Um, of the resulting database so that, that it has a decisive role in the development plans and services of development. And it's all for, meant for the people. So in other words, give us accurate information so we can design what we need to give you for, for a reason. Like I mentioned, if you don't have the national card yet, you're not going to get a, a, a portion of what they're talking. They're talking about purchasing power. They're talking about generating um, a livelihood for you. And they're going to create jobs with the development pro, uh, road project. That's why Turkey's here. Turkey wants involved in that money. Everybody and their brother wants to go in. All kinds of countries. We all know all of that. Okay, prime minister, uh, prime minister's advisor. Okay, national development plans depend on the census results. So the data resulting from the census will contribute to improving government administration, enhancing levels of governance as well as supporting investment, increasing the efficiency of the use of resources to achieve comprehensive economic development. Uh, Soleil, the, the advisor, you guys got to respect him. 
you should, the comprehensive population census offers many fundamental axes that contribute to achieving these goals. And most notably, these goals are, one, census helps to identify areas suffering, which includes water resources, roads, electricity, schools, hospital, and banks. It also provides um, drawing up effective housing policies. So that's for, for the residential housing for people to live. Comprehensive population also, census also is to collect accurate information about the number of population, the geographical distribution, age groups, educational level, in addition to its contribution to helping the government and the private sector to better plan and perform economic priorities through optimic optimal policies within the development plans that are going to run through 24 and 2028. So they openly tell us exactly what they're what they want, what they're for. And you notice it, it wasn't about politics. It wasn't about ethnicity. That's what this is about. This is a development. It's, it's not about that. It's not your traditional census. It's a development census. Here's on the here's an article that cause uh, is interesting. It says on the eve of its launch, a security aspect you may not know about the census is the name of it. So this gentleman by the name of Raad explains that any crime that may occur in the future or any person wanted in any charge, whether criminal or terrorist, it is easy to obtain his address, work information and all its details based on the census information. So the census is strategically considered in an important essential point to maintain Iraqi's national security. That's there's about five or six article uh, paragraphs in here. That I just I wanted to just highlight that part because why? Because it's going to basically tell people tell them the truth about a lot of things. And I would, wouldn't be surprised if um, this information has a sting to some people. Because, if, in fact, that they have been doing things that were um, above, and be, above and beyond what they should have been doing, they're going to be at risk, just the way it's going to be. Uh, for instance, salaries, if, you had, if you're getting double, triple salaries and they, they find it out, um, you're probably going to have a knock on the door. So this article is interesting. It says that, obviously, we had the Kurdistan, um, Balat, he was not Kurdistan, but the Turkish gentleman uh, and, and Turkish minister of transportation. He, he's been in Iraq doing a couple of days worth of uh, deals and 150 businessmen. But anyway, it says today, though, in, as of last night, their time at about midnight, it says the Kurdistan region closes its borders doors with Turkey for travelers. So it says the border port with Turkey on Tuesday, we will stop 48 hours as of midnight, goes on to say, the movement of individuals crossing into Turkish territory through the port will stop completely for 48 hours in conjunction with the general census procedures in Iraq. So tomorrow, no, you're not going anywhere across the borders. I have a feeling, though, that there's an article that talks about the ability for uh, commercial trucking, etc., um, for legitimate purposes to keep the country moving, um, aside from tourism and everything else, uh, they shut it down. Okay. It says Baghdad, is, here's an article, it says Baghdad is living in extraordinary calm. So everybody, everybody's kind of calmed down right now. The curfew paints a new landscape to support the census. So Wednesday, the streets of the capital of Baghdad appeared almost completely devoid of movement with the implementation of comprehensive curfew imposed by the government as part of supporting its national census. Census is, that's what they say. Okay, so it says, the quiet scene experienced by the Capitol reflects the commitment of citizens to government measures aimed at ensuring the success of the country's first comprehensive census in about 20 years. So ultimately, my view was, that, you know, calm is the day, is the days for a lock. I mean, a lock, I don't know about that, a rock. Uh, a very good sign that educational information that they have received is working. They know how important it is at this stage of their future to play by the rules and get what is required to secure their future. Namely, they're going to get their wealth, just like in that audio I put in Patreon. Everyone now um, that has a, a, a national card better, if you don't have one, you better get one. If you don't have a bank account, you should have already gotten one, but you probably ought to get one of those too. That's all part of the process.
is that they're going and the expectation is that they're going to get money. They're going to go. They're going to get what they deserve. Remember, their constitution has they have rights. And a lot of those rights come from their income off their natural resources. OK, and that is it's in the Constitution. I think it's Article 111 that has a lot about it. Might, it. might even be Article 10, 110, too. But 111, I think, is one that you could look it up. Um, I think I got it right. Alawadi, here's an article. Citizens' commitment to ban to band together effectively and participate in the census represents the Iraq's people's respect for the law. The calm, you heard about it, banding together, team effort. Sounds like they've, they've got a, a good hold on the population, which is, which is fascinating. Uh, a hold not in a bad way, but they got a grip. They got, they've been educating them, telling them, this is what we're doing for you. This is what you need to do. This is why it's important. Sauter is telling the people to be accurate, be, be positive, and not allow for the corruption. Al-Sudani is mirroring that. That IDMS, I think it was called that, um, that the management system for the for uh, the contractors they they want everything to flow smoothly they want people to actually get what that what's being paid for so if they put a billion or sixty billion or seventy billion into reconstruction efforts out of that four hundred and seventy billion they have in a development fund um, you got to go that's a lot of money sixty to seventy billion I think the whole project from the port of file all the way through the the um, the development road project is about 17 billion and they're talking about accessing 60 to 70 billion okay so that's only back you're back to 50 ish <laughs> if that's the case they got a lot of money they got a lot that's good so here it is it says the commitment of the citizens to band together and participate in the census represents the people's respect for the law it says iraq's commitment confirms today that the state and the law are the focus of respect for the iraqi people and that the iraqis want their homeland and their state to be high promoted advanced they want to be proud of their, their country and they're going to be i believe and, and here they are pointing out that there is a serious keenness to show the image of a bright, strong, disciplined state in front of other countries and other people. So they're going to stand up and be proud. I think when they showcase their new currency, their real effective exchange rate, and all the things that they've accomplished in the last few years, uh, I think they're going to have a lot of people um, from other countries and other peoples of, of the world being um, congratulatory. So basically, still, there's, there's a calm that's tra transpired over the country. We still see peace, even though there's, there's some problems in the Middle East, but that we still see some peace in Iraq like we haven't seen before. The investment environment is, is, is off the charts. So basically, what is it? Accurate numbers will be very beneficial to the citizens, and they'll likely notice just how much in very short order. That's, that's my view, is that this, this is coming to the point where Al Sudani, Al Alak, Tape Sammy, all the team, the Ministerial Council of Economics, and everybody are going to band together, just like the people are banding together to get this uh, monetary reform process done with and move forward. Here's an article that is, is big. I already mentioned some of it, so I don't need to get into all of it, but it says Al Najjar, the development fund, aims to mobilize Iraq, Iraqi savings estimated at $470 billion. That's almost a half a trillion dollars, you guys. And what do they do? They say that they have like six goals to do, uh, one of which is mobilize the savings of the Iraqi people for what? For the people. He says that at, he adds that the Iraqi Development Fund for, has six goals, including mobilizing the private savings of the Iraqi people, estimated at about 60 to 70 billion. And then he goes on and says the development road is considered one of the most important strategic projects for Iraq and sev several countries will participate in it and will shorten the time for transporting goods by, like I said, 15 days. If you do the math on that, folks, you're going to find that just one ship can save upwards of $180,000 per visit. It's amazing. That's just one ship. So over a collective over the years, the savings for shipping is just going to be phenomenal. And that's why they're cutting out 15 days because of the expense. I think it. I think I'm probably being light, but it costs 10 to 12 thousand dollars a day to run a ship. That's just to keep it running. <laughs> All right. 
Population census will, will establish a new Iraq based on accurate analysis. This one's brief. It's, well, I'm, I'm just only going to get to one point. Is that the religious authorities, back to like al Sadr, etc., uh, institutions of all sects and all social activities for the efforts in urging their thanking them. Because why? Because it's going to contribute to the success of the census and raising awareness of its importance. And then they go on to say that, that this day today, which will establish a new Iraq based on accurate analysis and data that will help decision makers in the development, econo developing the economic situation, the service, uh, social, and even political development plans and programs. So all of this, you guys, is based off the government is allowing this and doing this by conducting the population census. Uh, and it's not only accomplished as a task that has been suspended for many, many years, but the procedure that's carried out now using uh, work mechanisms that are implemented for the first time ever, using technological means, modern metho methods, that shortened the effort and also um, reduced the costs and provided it's going to provide reliable results. That's the, that's the whole focus is that everybody um, gets a fair shake because everybody, all the citizens know that um, they're part of this. They've been educated about it and um, being accurate is fair to everybody. And that's the whole idea. So let's see what happens. But basically, the citizens um, have been, you know, thanked for their calmness. Um, they've been urged to keep cooperating um, and allow the teams to do their work um, and understand that it's a national project and they want it to be a success. And I believe that what we're seeing because of the calm, because of what they've been told, because of that educational system, as you heard from Hafid, the guy in the audio, is that they're teaching people, hey, have your national card. You're going to get wealth, whether that comes from the hydrocarbon law or however it comes. But I told you, they have a savings of about 470 billion. They're going to use 60 to 70 for the citizens. So where's, you know, why don't they have a little left over to maybe give a bonus? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the case. But obviously, um, there's going to be some sort of a uh, sharing of their uh, income. And Iraq uh, has been doing um, inroads for the last two years, and I think they're going to continue uh, the same uh, with that same determination. And this system is going to have accuracy. It's going to be complete. And the process, um, sh well, once it's finished, they're going to announce it. How long is it going to take? Well, the other day they talked about 24 hours. Well, now they, they say, well, not a bad thing. They said that within 48 hours, maybe that's more reasonable. But we no, do know that they're using an electronic uh, process. The people are they're throwing information up into the, into the cloud, if you will, uh, as they do it. So ultimately, I think that they had enough um, personnel on the ground to be able to facilitate this with plenty of time to have it done in two days. And uh, I think Petra and Pompey Peter figured that uh, they could probably even be done by early afternoon tomorrow, okay, because of the nature of um, how many people and how many family members. It, it, you know, it's just an estimate, but they'll take the two days, but the bottom line is it may not take that long. Will it take 24 hours to, to get the final results just, just for the component of the, the, um, the numbers? Uh, probably... 48 hours, that would be a long time, I think. So, yeah, just use that as a 24 to 48 hours as a juncture to see what the true numbers are. They'll publish it. They're going to be very vocal about this. As far as they already are vocal about it, but big time today. I mean, it's all over the news. So, but anyway, keep that, up, keep that in mind. And then the deputy framework, it says that the population census is, is essential for fair distribution of financial allocations. Well, I think the gentleman, Hafid, has told us that they're telling them about financial allocations. They're talking about purchasing power. It's talking about their, their wealth. So you can see how, um, why. But remember, we talked about it. People asked many times and asked me many times. And, hey, they said, do we need to wait for the census? I thought no. And hey, bad on me, but is it a coincidence or is it something that they decided to, to change 
or, or add in at the last minute because it's taken some time. And one of the, the answers is, is that here they tell us the truth. They tell us that uh, the population census is important in terms of knowing real numbers of the citizens and their areas of residence. And this results in final and financial rights and entitlements for the federal budget that is distributed to the governance. So they want it accurate and complete. It says um, they're relying on the, ra it says, and they're noting that relying on the ration cards or their national card does not provide accurate details enough and doesn't, does not reflect the increase in the population in some governments, governance. So at this stage, with all the fake salaries and all the uh, ghost employees and a lot of that stuff, they maybe took, they took the tide to, uh, took the tide a different direction, which is, you know, let's get all of it. Let's get a high tide, catch everybody. Okay. Um, it says the population census is a tool that provides us with accurate data that helps improve budget allocations and organize distribution of the services. All right. So ultimately, they want to have accuracy. They want to improve the budget allocation so that improve it so that the people can get more maybe i don't know and organize the distribution for the services all right um look that notion that was thought about the national cards or ration cards would have been enough for them to allow for monetary reforms to have already been in place but they apparently feel that this is cleaner way of finishing the process from the sounds of it it's ongoings today the process uh is complete is a good sign of things to come the expectations are high from the educational point of view and uh, respect to their constitutional rights and that and that is monetary the constitutional rights of the country is a monetary issue they have rights to the money from their natural resources so this is pretty big it, it is what it is the national card wasn't enough that's what that that's what i get from that the national card was a lot of information Gave them, gave them a count for how many people were out there, but now they want to narrow it down for the development part of it. But they also wanted accuracy in that account. So to fine tune it, that's what they're doing. And I think they probably um, got some leeway. Hence, you haven't seen the 2024 budget um, be exposed just yet. So wasn't there a meeting with Rashid and the Supreme Court just yesterday? I think there was. Why? Yeah. Think about it. If that if they're talking about constitutional rights, that's what we're talking about here. Hey, okay, don't shoot the messenger. It's just part of the part of the process. Okay, so the prime minister it says the population census will establish uh, a new Iraqi based on accurate analysis. So the Supreme Media Committee for the Population Census confirmed today, Wednesday, that the preliminary results will be announced within 48 hours of receiving the data. So if they finish the data tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon, they said within 48 hours. Or if it's 10 o'clock tomorrow night, it says within 48 hours. Okay. It says committee member uh, Majid, he says that since the early morning hours, which is about seven o'clock this morning in Baghdad, there has been a government mobilization of all state institutions, private agencies, and Ministry of Planning staff in general to cooperate to make this national exercise a success. Noting that the enumerators began the census process to stamp the data, confirm it, and send it to the data center. So as soon as they finish one, boom, it's up. Two, boom, it's up. Okay? They have... That's how, it's, how it rolls. Okay, so the operations room is a very capable technical room in terms of availability of devices, large screens, equipment, and computers, in addition to the working employees who have been trained for a long time to transfer and receive the data and transfer to other centers even. So basically the data will be relied upon by the Ministry of Planning and uh, after it's finished, the initial results will be announced within about 48 hours. So look, upon completion of the census, results will be announced, and we're not far off from there now. And what we're talking about is sheer numbers that have to do with the constitutional rights of the citizens. And what, what are they talking about constitutional rights? And they're telling them monetary reforms. They're openly talking about that. That's where we are, you guys. It, it's... Um, 
I think we're in a really beautiful spot. So let's see what these guys do tomorrow, and we'll go from there. But thank you for being with us, you guys. I appreciate all those likes. I appreciate all the kind words that you guys say to in the comment sections. It really goes a long way. Um, so please, if you like, if you like the content, hey, just hit that subscribe. I think we're at forty-seven nine nine nine. So let's hit that 48 for fun, okay? So anyway, um, please, thank you for your contributions. The PayPal, Zelle, and Venmo, uh, they're wonderful for helping keeping the content flowing. So thank you very much, for, so much for helping us. Appreciate it, you guys. Have a great weekend and week. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.